Welcome to the Simply Authentic Podcast with Angie and Tanya, where we strive to inspire, empower, and challenge you to be your most authentic self. We'll talk a little real estate and interview entrepreneurs, business and community leaders, and hear inspiring stories. Simply Authentic Podcast. I'm Angie Mullings. And I'm Tanya Murphan. And in honor of Veterans Day this week, we wanted to do an episode focused on veterans and what they mean for our way of life. Wanted to say a very heartfelt thank you to everyone who has served yes. and who is currently serving. Absolutely. So that leads us to our guest today. <laughs> we have with us CW4 retired Clifford Bauman. Welcome, Cliff. Hey, Welcome. thank you for having me. You know, it's always, of course, I live in Virginia. I don't yes. live in, uh, in Missouri. I used to a long time yeah. ago. Uh, so it's always fun to come back and visit family. And, and I, I just want to say I appreciate you uh, asking me to come on your podcast. Because, you know, being a veteran of 34 years, I uh, served in the military. Uh, sometimes I think, you know, we forget about the veterans, yeah. you know, a lot of times. Mm -hmm. And for me, I don't like being in the spotlight, even with my podcast and all the things that I do. Yeah. Um, I think it's, I think it's okay. And I, and I say this on my podcast is it's okay to let somebody thank you for your service, mm -hmm, right? Cause mm -hmm. we have a hard time with that. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of veterans struggle with that. Yeah. And you know, sometimes when you, when on veterans day that, you know, you go out and you say something to a veteran, you may not get a very positive right. response yes. yeah. I agree and i tell you. people don't take that personally yeah. they just don't know how to react to that because they're not used to it that's yeah. so interesting mm -hmm. and i'm glad that you said that because very many times when i say thank you i feel like they're embarrassed or they uh, you know and and you're right they probably just don't know how to how to, how, how to respond yeah. and because I, yeah. I feel the same way yeah um you know you go to you know starbucks or like i was at freddy's today uh because we have freddy's in virginia but not close oh, to do? where i live okay um so when i come to missouri i, I hit <laughs> freddy's a lot because yeah. they got really great hamburgers yes. and and i had they the jalapeno sure cheeseburger sorry i went on tangent but hamburger yeah. cheeseburger today <laughs> but you know when, but, you, but it is nice so when you go out and, and you're at starbucks or wherever and, and somebody buys your coffee yes um you know mm -hmm. i usually say thank you sure uh but a lot of times i will buy the person's coffee behind me yeah mm -hmm. you know and return return the favor yeah. but yeah. usually it starts that. a conversation yes yeah. absolutely and that's the most important part i think i think for people who haven't served they're appreciative of it, but they don't know how to start that conversation. Yeah. But it's the same way with veterans. You know, we, we have a different culture, a different thing mm -hmm. that we grew up in. I was in the military for a very long time. And sometimes it's hard for us not to be able to communicate that. And mm -hmm. I think it's just, you know, just know that sometimes veterans will talk a lot mm -hmm. and sometimes they won't. Sure. And and that's okay. And that's so if, right. if you say thank you to a veteran or you buy him something and you don't get that response you're looking for, I know how disheartening and upsetting that could be. Just know that they're probably coming from a, a place that they're just not comfortable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that yeah. makes so much sense. I'm glad that you talked about that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So tell us about you. Let's get this started with people okay. knowing you're, you're 34 <laughs> years in the military. Yeah. You've so also grew up here locally in mm -hmm. Aurora. I did. So give us a little bit of background. On so you. Um, I joined the military when I was 17 years old, went okay. to basic training uh, in between my junior and senior year. They call that split option. Um, so after I graduated um, high school, then I went to my AIT training, which is the job, specific job that you can be doing in the military. Mm -hmm. And mine happened to be aviation. So I've been okay. aviation. So I was uh, maintenance, aviation maintenance. Oh, and okay. actually my older brother, who's the retired superintendent from Ozark, Chris Ballman, Dr. Yes. Ballman, mm -hmm. uh, actually joined two years before I did. So we always okay. had a competition going. Okay. <laughs> so like we both wrestled in high school and I broke all of his records but one. Oh. And so he joined the guard went aviation and yeah. so then i had to join the guard and become aviation <laughs> so at one time in aurora at the guard unit there was two sergeant bombings and it was mm. me and him uh -huh. and then he decided to go uh the o grade the, the regular officer way mm -hmm. and i decided to become a warrant officer and if you don't know anything about warrant officers we're a, um, a, a, a technician in a certain field and mine was aviation Okay. And well, our officers are kind of generalized. Mm -hmm. um, so mine was specifically in this one job for aviation maintenance. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, and so I was in the National Guard, you know, just did the weekend thing two weeks that summer. Mm -hmm. Well, in 2000, um, I got a job offer to go to Washington, D.C. and work at National Guard Bureau, mm -hmm. um, active duty, Title 10. 
And so I took that job. Okay. And then, of course, you know what happened at 9-11. Mm-hmm. Um, I was at the Pentagon 9-11. Yeah. Um, I spent over 18 hours looking for victims after the attack. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately, everybody that I had found um, was deceased. I didn't find anybody alive. Mm-hmm. Um, story about that, my boss, had he not come in 10 minutes late that day, I wouldn't be sitting here. Because really? I would have been right where the plane hit. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I think... And then, you know, um, well, I know we're going to get into this a little bit, but I'll get into it now. Um, you know, I had a hard time processing everything that I saw. I can't and, imagine. And, you know, and not to go in great detail, but, um, you know, when that plane hit, and the plane did hit the Pentagon. Yeah. So I'm going to, mm-hmm. because anytime I talk, people say, oh, there was a missile that hit the Pentagon. You know, is this, yeah. you see the, the rumors, the conspiracy theories, sure. you know, whatever. Yeah. Well, I'm telling anybody right now, I crawled over a heck of a lot of plane parts for it not to be a yeah. plane and be in aviation. So yeah. it was yeah. a plane that hit the Pentagon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but you-